Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-Level Maths. Here we're looking at mutually exclusive and independent events for probability so we can answer questions from exercise 5c. So before we get started, a common misconception with this topic is that the two words are, or the two terms here, are linked to each other. So for example, if you're not mutually exclusive, then you must be independent. And this is wrong. Okay, we're going to look at the two definitions together, but they are in no way linked to each other. They have two separate rules that guide whether something is mutually exclusive or independent. So don't get them mixed up with each other. Just because it's not one doesn't mean it can't or cannot. Um, or can be the other one. Okay, so just before we get started, that's our ground basis for starting the video. Okay, let's have a look at mutually exclusive then. So two events cannot happen at the same time. They are called mutually exclusive. So the probability of both of the events happening is equal to zero. Okay, so consider the Venn diagram here. If it was a mutually exclusive event, then the Venn diagram here would have no overlapping part of the diagram. Okay, or in other words, the probability of getting A or B is the probability of A adding the probability of B. Let's consider the example of rolling a dice. On one roll, can you get, uh, the, say A is getting a 3 on a dice, and B is getting a 6 on a dice. In a single roll, it is impossible to get both a 3 and a 6 out together. You don't count whether it lands on a corner and hence throwing a 3 or a 6 up as, as a equivalent to getting a 3 and a 6. It's just not possible to happen. So hence the Venn diagram would look like this. The probability of getting a 3 and a 6 on the same roll of a dice is impossible so there is no overlapping section here. And if you were to work out the probability of getting a 3 or a 6 then you're effectively working out the probability of getting a 3, adding on to the probability of getting a 6, and you would get 2 6 here. So this is our test that we're going to use to check if, the, um, if, a, if two events are mutually exclusive or not. So if this is true, then it is mutually exclusive, and if it's wrong, then it's not mutually exclusive. So we're going to have a look at a few questions where we test out this rule here on a few probabilities and we look at whether it's mutually exclusive or not. This is also a really good rule that we can use to test mutual exclusivity. Alright, let's have a look at the next definition that we're going to look at today. So an independent event. So for example, two independent events could be at separate times tossing a coin and rolling a dice. Okay, these two are completely separate events to each other. One, if you get ahead, that doesn't affect the next roll of your dice. Okay, there are effectively two probabilities that don't affect each other in any way, shape or form. They are completely separate. They are independent. Okay, so for two independent events, the probability of A and B happening together can be calculated by the probability of A times by B. If there is a chance that one probability does affect the other probability, then this won't apply. You, you don't get the same answers out when you work out this calculation here. So for example, we could use here the probability of a head and rolling a 6. And in this case here, all you'd have to do is work out the probability of roll, tossing a head and times that by rolling a 6, and you would get 1 out of 12. 1 out of 6 times 1 out of 2. Okay, so there we are. So you've got two rules to remember here then. So mutual exclusive events, when you do the probability of A or B happening together, then it's just the probability of A plus the probability of B. And for independent events, it's the probability of A and B happening together will give you the probability of A times the probability of B. And if these calculations come out to be true, then we can imply mutual exclusivity or independent of events. And if they don't come out to be true, then we can, um, then we can say that it's either not mutually exclusive or not independent. And if we're told that it's mutually exclusive, then we can assume this. And if we're told that it's independent, then we can assume this. 
All right, let's have a look at this in action then. So events A and B are mutually exclusive, so we can assume this, theory, this uh, probability here. And the probability of A is 0.2, and the probability of B is 0.4. Now also remember when you're doing mutually exclusive events, the Venn diagram is going to look like this, 0.2 and 0.4. Remember 0.4 is going to go on the bottom as well to make it add up to 1. Now just uh, going back to independent events for a second here, there's no special Venn diagram of what a Venn diagram might look like for independent events. Okay, so Calculate the probability of A or B, well that's just 0.6, adding together your two separate probabilities. And we know this formula is true from the fact that it's mutually exclusive events. Let's answer another question now. Find the probability of A and not included B. Well in this case here, it's just this part here because this is the only part of the circle here that is in A and it's not part of B as well. So it's just 0.2. The next question here is find the probability of not being in A and not being in B. Well, in this case here, it's just this part of the Venn diagram here, which is 0.4. I would remember that one here. All right then, so events C and D are independent. So given that they're independent, we can assume this formula to be true here. Uh, we have no idea about whether they're mutually exclusive or not. Uh, calculate A, the probability of C and D happening together. Well, in this case here, that's easy. We can just times them together because we're given the fact they're independent. So we get 1 out of 15. So we can now construct a little Venn diagram here. And we can include probabilities inside a Venn diagram rather than just whole numbers or decimal numbers. So what we have to do next is we have to work out the other regions of the Venn diagram here. So what we have to do is to work out this region here is we have to do the probability of C, which is a third, take away 1 out of 15. So a third take away 1 out of 15 is 4 out of 15. And the probability of D is a fifth. So we have to do a fifth take away 1 out of 15. That leaves us with 2 out of 15. And the rest of the 15th that will add up to make a whole probability of 1 will equal 8 out of 15. OK, so we can now move on and answer some more difficult questions, such as the probability of C and not D happening. So it is in the circle for C, but not in the circle for D. So it's just going to be this 4 out of 15 value here. Part C is uh, the probability of not being in C and not being in D either. So that's just this 8 out of 15 down here. All right, and so another question here now. We've got uh, three circles here, but A and C don't overlap. So the Venn diagram shows the number of students watching a particular TV program, A, B or C. Find the probability that students watches B or C. So if they watch B or C, then they're anywhere within inside the B or the C circle. So it's this, uh, so 30 students in total. We have 4, 5, 10 and 7 students here that are either in the B or the C Venn diagram circle. So that's 27 in total. So 20, sorry, 26 in total. So that's 26 out of 30. Part B is to determine whether watching A and B are statistically independent. So we're going to have to check whether this theorem here applies. So the probability of A is 7 out of 30. The probability of B is 19 out of 30. Times in the two probabilities together. And we get, um, sorry, the, and the probability of A and B happening together is 4 out of 30. So it will check whether it equals 4 out of 30 afterwards. On the right hand side, probability of A times probability of B, 7 over 30 times 19 out of 30 is 133 out of 900, which um, when we compare it to the left, only has 120 out of 900. So the fact that these are not the same means that they are not independent because we have shown that this, um, this theorem here or this rule here does not apply to these events, hence it is not independent. 
All right then. So then, uh, have a go at this question here then. Question five from exercise 5C. Pause the video and try this one out. All right then, so the Venn diagram shows the number of children in a play group that like playing with bricks, action figures, or trains. Hopefully this is a mixed gender, um, a mixed gender play group. So part A is state with a reason which two types of toys are mutually exclusive. Well, we know straight away that if it's mutually exclusive, then the probability of A and B is going to equal zero, hence they don't overlap. I would say that playing with bricks and playing with trains here don't overlap. So bricks and trains are the mutually exclusive event because their probabilities um, when you intersect them are zero, or in other words, the Venn diagrams don't overlap. Now this is completely separate from whether it's independent or not. So um, bricks and trains are mutually exclusive. Uh, part B is determine whether playing with bricks and playing with action figures are independent. So playing with bricks and action figures, that's B and F, should equal the probability of B times the probability of F if they're independent. So if this theorem comes out to be true, then we can say that they're independent. If we can say that uh, the two sides of the equal sign are not the same, they're not equal, then we say it's not independent. So the probability of B and F is the intersection of the bricks and action figures um, Venn diagram circle here. So that's going to be 1 out of how many people here um, are there? So 3 add 1 is 4, I think it's 21 people in total. Equals, now the probability of playing with bricks is 4 out of 21, and the probability of playing with action figures is 11 out of 21. So times your two probabilities together here, and you're going to get 41 over 21 squared. Let's just grab a calculator, make sure we don't make a mistake there. 441. Um, and I definitely can see that that is not going to be similar to 21 over 441. So given that they are not equal, we can imply, therefore, that they are not independent. If these two values did come out to be the same answer, then they would be independent. But in this case here, they are not independent. OK, so hopefully that's uh, summarised what mutually exclusive means. The probability of adding the two events together is equal to the probability of either of them happening. And the probability of independent events when you multiply them together will equal the same as their intersection. OK, have lots of practice on exercise 5C. It's an easy question if you know how to do them. So have lots of practice and make it second nature to you. Persevere through the difficult ones and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks very much for watching.